home. But anyway, so this is the little program that I wrote. It's a little bit broken. Something is wrong in it, and I haven't figured out what it is yet. Um, so it's just like a little text. So it's based on Dragon Age. <laughs> That's what the references are, because I made it for my friends. Of course. Can you run it for me? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it's a little broken. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, I forgot to. Uh, yeah, see, something is wrong up there. But anyway, so what's your name? Are you the Herald of Andraste? Andraste. That's who you are. That's who you are in Dragon Age. You're basically like <laughs> Jesus. Like they're like, oh, you are because Andraste is like their god, and they're like, you are the Herald of Andraste, and everybody's always like, oh, your worship. And I always pick like because you can pick different like icon or different options for what you want to say to people, mm -hmm. and I'm always like, oh, well, I don't really know if I'm the Herald. I don't even know if I'm really holy. But then like I love it. They're all like, oh, your worship. <laughs> anyway, so that's if you say no. And okay, so you right. can do it a different way. So, what is your name? Bunny. You say yes. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of the quests are like, will you find my lost buffalo? And I'm like, I am the leader of the Inquisition. Like, I do not have time for this. And so, if you say yes, and they're like, yay. And then if you say no, they're like, hmm, some Jesus you are. So that's my little <laughs> But sometimes it, it doesn't work right. Um, something in there is not perfect, but I'm still, I'm still tweaking on it. <laughs> okay. So, so let's look at the error. Oh, yeah. Because it does say, here, let me just, am I still in pro learning Ruby? No, I'm not. Okay, so found equal and conditional should be double equal. Oh, that's this. Okay. Yeah, so it told you on line 13. And so do you know the difference between single equals and double equals in Ruby? Oh, um, yes. Oh, God, I just learned it last night. But it's, I can't remember specifically, but I know I had to put them as doubles. Oh, I didn't realize that that was the line that it told me the error was on. That's handy. Oh, yes. It gave you the file and then the line number. Sweet. And then the warning. Yeah. So, okay. So I fixed that. And that must be because I was having that problem earlier where even if you said no, it would put this line at the bottom after the. Ah. So let's see if that were, if that fixed the whole problem. Okay. Here, let's, let's try that again. Save it. Clear. No, clear. Shit clear okay <laughs> all right and then jesse uh yes no oh yes yeah, so that it worked this time okay so, so you wanted to that and then it also printed the other option so fix that problem yeah let's so let me tell you why so you really understand it um take off put it back to one equal sign and then um, in the put s, like inside the, the if block, mm -hmm. also print out the value of task. Okay, how do I do that? Or where do I put that? Um, just add a new line with enter. The other day, Evelyn was writing a little program um, on this the Khan Academy Hour of Code thing. And she was stuck on this one point where it said, but before you do all that, maybe you should set the the pen color to yellow and she was like but i can't because i already filled in that line with the bad the background is there so i can't do this other thing in the same place and i was like okay okay click at the beginning of that line and push enter and it, it did it made a new line for her and she was like oh a lot of people in my class got stuck on that <laughs> so that that's kind of interesting just the idea that she didn't realize you could push enter to add a line to the program they thought it was like this fixed state <laughs> yeah so kind of right. like that so all right so, printing to the screen is that cat and ruby as well uh no you're doing it on line 15 
Oh, prints, right. Puts, and then you said you wanted to put the value of task. So just task like that. that yeah, we could put, it'll put like task contains and then the, and then task like that. Kind what? Yeah, like, like hard code a string. When, when I do this, this means in double quotes, okay. task contains. Yeah, and then plus task, kind of like you did on line three with the name. Okay, let's try that. And task is, it contains what you enter at that particular prompt, right? Yeah. Um, yes. No. Task contains yes. <laughs> okay, so if you look at the program, that's because single equals is assignment. Oh, it's not, um, it's not within the if, because we want it to be if task equals yes, not task is yes. That makes sense. Because we're not right. assigning so, it to task. We have to, we want to wait to see what they, what the other person puts for task. And then you want it to line up with that, not, yeah, because we don't, we don't know what task is going to equal, I guess, since they could put it anything. Right. The, the get us on line 12 is going to wait until they enter something right but yeah the double equals it sign is a test of equality and the return value of task double equals yes is true or false but the return value of assignment is well i don't know let's find out open irb wait irb the ruby repl what? Okay, go to Bash Shell. Go to your, your shell prompt. You no 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 no. You go to your terminal. I'm sorry. Oh. Go to your terminal. And type IRB. This gets you to a Ruby prompt. Where you can type Ruby things okay. and see what happens with them immediately. So like type two plus four or something. And it tells you immediately what that value is. Okay. So you can do things like type task equals get us dot chomp. Ah. Right. And then it's asking you for input now, just like in the program. So type no. You can you can do this. You can open IRB and it's like you're in Ruby, um, and you can type little pieces of your program often and see what happens. Okay. So now, if you type task double equals yes, you'll have to put yes in quotes. Oh, I should have said task double equals yes. Right, and and it got back false. Now type task single equals yes. And it returns yes, which is truthy. Have you read about truthiness yet? A little bit. It was a little bit in my Ruby book about like trues and false and. Okay. Yeah. Ruby thinks pretty much everything is truthy except like nil and false and I don't know, maybe zero. Um, I, I don't remember. Right. Uh, but what we see here is that a, the return value of an assignment is the value that was assigned. Uh, so try something else. Um, make a new variable and say like caret equals Oops. And then in parentheses task equals uh, some other value bunny or no or in quotes a string. Yes. So we're assigning bunny to task. Okay. And that whole thing returned bunny. And now what is in caret? Because uh, we assigned the return value of task equals bunny to bunny caret. Bunny is in caret. Uh, probably so. Type caret to find out. Just caret by itself. Yes. Yes. Carrot Usually carrots bunny. are in bunnies. <laughs> but now we have bunny in caret. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so do you understand why your, um, 
your program behaved the way it did? Yeah, because I was ex- I was assigning a value to task, but that's not what I needed the program to do. I needed it to get the value of task from mm-hmm. the person who's putting it in, whether they're putting in yes or no. I don't I didn't need to automatically assign it to yes because they might not put that. They might put something else. Um, yeah. so yes. So, and do you know why the if block fired? Uh Oh, you mean when it pooped out, wow, I pledge my allegiance to the Mm -hmm. Inquisition. Um, I guess because because I didn't have task assigned correctly. And so it didn't didn't connect it with the else if. It just put it like automatically because it didn't close this one. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense, the words that are coming out of my mouth. (laughs) Right, right. I feel like like I've got it. I just – I don't have the vocabulary yet to – so this is this is called this is the part where, where I want you to play compiler and uh, put the single equals back there uh, just for talking through it. Yeah. OK, because that's so confusing. let's play compiler. That's confusing it because I'm saying you need to get task. But then later on, I'm assigning it already. I'm saying the task is yes. Ah, but, but it's not but, confused. Oh, OK, it's not literally confused anyway. Um, it is doing something completely logical and predictable, just not what you wanted it to do. Right. Yeah. So I want to see if you can step through, this is the hard part, step through and and say what Ruby is doing that led it to print. Wow. When you typed in no. Um, Because it's not, it's not connecting with. No, 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 no. Okay. Don't worry about what it's not doing. Don't worry about what it was supposed to do. What are the steps the compiler takes on line 13? It's. Well, What's it the knows, first thing? It, well, it knows that if the person puts in yes with lowercase, then it should print wow. So it knows that. And then, um, and it does that. Okay, I'm going to be like super picky on your language because I'm trying to like, um, because that's how we do it. I, I don't know. That's just how we do it. You said if the person puts in yes, but actually that's, 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 that's on line 12. Don't even worry about line 12. Okay. On line 13, the compiler is concerned with the value in the task variable. It doesn't know how it got there. So what you said was accurate. And yet I'm trying to, I'm trying to make you play compiler just on line 13. Okay. So we're past that stage. So now it's just trying to determine the value of task. Yes. Um, and when, and that's where it runs into not doing what I want it to do because here I'm assigning. Oh, it's because here it says if the value of task equals yes, then print that. And then I just told it here. Yes. The value of task is yes. So was, ah, oh, that's, that's why it was printing it because I told it that was the value. And so it was like, oh, okay, so that's the value. And when that's the value, I put, wow. Sort of. <laughs> Very close. Um, so it doesn't actually care what the value of task is at that point. Um, it just knows it, it got a truthy value in the or statement. Uh, so now I'm going to tell you what I wanted you to say, which, ah. Uh, <laughs> so line 13. There's an if statement. So the first thing the compiler has to do is evaluate the condition of the if. Highlight the condition of the if for me. Uh, Close. The whole thing. The whole condition of the if. Uh, You've also got the if in there. Oh, so just the condition of the if. So this. Yes. Yes. It's It's a little more clear in languages that force you to put parentheses around this, in my opinion. Ruby will let you put parentheses, but you don't have to. Uh, right, so that's the whole condition. The condition contains an or statement. Mm-hmm. That's, the, that's the this. Mm-hmm. And I'm yeah, sure, and I imagine th- that there's a simpler way to do it where you could just code it to say, accept this value, whether it's lowercase or uppercase. I'm sure that exists. I just haven't encountered it yet, but I have encountered oh. using or. So I was like, okay, well, for this program, I'll just do that. That way, whether the person types. So yeah, so I'm sure that there is a better way to just specify that the capitalization doesn't matter. Right. Um, but I, I just haven't learned that yet. So I did the or instead. Which is 
good. You're using the tools that you've learned so far. Uh, I'll, I'll cheat and tell you that the way to do that is usually to say um, task dot to lowercase double equals yes. Uh, yeah, so we just convert it all to one case and then equals equals it against something. All yeah, I one. figured there was a way to do it. That was probably pretty simple. I just hadn't learned it yet. Right, right. Okay, but what I want to what I want to get to is it hits the if it says I need to check the condition. It gets the condition, which it finds on the rest of the line, and it says how do I evaluate this? The or takes precedence. Okay, how do I evaluate or? Well, first I look at the thing on the left. And the, the expression on the left says task double equals yes. At that point, task contains no, because that's what you typed. And so it substitutes no in for task and says, does that double equal yes? No, it no. doesn't. Right, so false. Um, and then the or means it's got if it gets false on the first side, it's going to go ahead and check the one on the right. If it had gotten true, it would know what to do already. It wouldn't have to do the one on the right. Right. Um, but it got false, so it's all right. All right. Well, there's an or, so let's Next try the one. right. And that expression says task equals yes. So it evaluates that, which happens to put yes in task, but that's just a side effect that actually has no effect on the program because we never use task again. Um, but the return value of task equals yes, single equals, is yes. yes. Right, we saw that in the IRB prompt. So yes, in or looks at yes and says, oh, that, that looks like true to me, because it's truthy. So the or returns true. Rather and then than, we yeah, rather than what it's supposed to do, which is drop it back down to the else if. Right. If they put in no. Right. Okay. Because yeah, so when you when you change it back to double equals, then then it, it gets it right. So one thing, the Ruby is a dynamic language, which means that when it sees something like a string and it wants a boolean, it's like eh, good enough. Um, it doesn't. The compiler doesn't evaluate whether you're giving it the right kind of thing. In some languages. Um, this wouldn't compile and the compiler would refuse to run it with the single equals because it would be like, uh-uh, or operates on Booleans and you are giving me a string. That's not the thing. And I refuse to run any of your program ever until you fix it and make me happy. Ruby like yeah. tried to run it. I mean, it, yeah. it did run it. It just didn't run it the way that I wanted it to. It was super friendly. It even gave you a nice little warning. Yeah, I thought that was, that was nice. Like, yeah, that was super friendly. <laughs> Ruby is super friendly. Uh, there are advantages and disadvantages to that. It's easier to write a wrong program in a super friendly language. But it's also easier to write a program, period, in a super friendly language. Which cat is that? That's Loki. Laying on his Loki's back. so like a fat. Little goober. Totally looks like a goober. <laughs> awesome. Okay. okay, so you totally fixed your program. Good job. Uh, can we fix the spelling of allegiance? Oh, yeah. Oops. Ah. Right? That's that right? That's still look not right. right. I think the second E is an A. Allegiance. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. I also think um, probably worshipfulness has one L. It might. Does that look better? That yeah. looks better. Okay, good enough. Yeah, Ruby isn't, or I guess uh, TextMate here isn't spell checking for you. All right, sweet. All right, so. Fix that. Oh, let's stop recording. Okay. And see if it worked. <laughs>